Hi everyone, Shane from the Reptile Doctor and this video is going to be of desexing a dragon. So this is Icy. She's a very nice looking female central bearded dragon and she's just sitting nicely on the surgery table here. Um, she's had some problems with prolapses, cloacal prolapses and her owners have decided that they don't want to risk her breeding and so they have elected to desex her or spay her. So we're going to video that today to show you how we spay a normal healthy dragon. Often we're doing surgeries on things that have got major problems, but she's a nice healthy specimen. So we'll set her up for the anesthesia and then we'll get going. All right, so we've got Icy ready to give her anesthesia here. She's a bit of a wriggle bum. A bit of dragons generally don't like being placed on their back. So now we're gonna actually show you how we anesthetize lizards. So we thought we'd try and record it and see how it goes. So I've got her on the back, I'm going to be aiming for a vein that runs down on the uh, underside of the tail here and we're going to be using an injection of a drug called Alfaxan. For those vet nurses and nurses watching, it's about 4 to 5 milligram per kilo we give her, so we're going to give her about 0.2 of a mil and hopefully we get that intravenous and it'll take sort of 10 to 30 seconds and she'll be asleep and we can put a tube in it. So we'll see how we go. So we're just aiming for the midline under the scale, lift it up and we go down so we get a flash of blood into the syringe hub which I've got a little bit there got that in there so we're going to inject that now over about five seconds pull it out, just keep a bit of pressure on there, they can bleed a little bit after you take the needle out and we'll let her go to sleep So we're giving her that Alfaxan and so you can see now she's anaesthetised, normally a dragon won't lay like that and she's asleep enough that we can actually open her mouth and see quite a fleshy tongue there, we've got to try and get down behind that and we're going to be using these special little ET tubes that are made for reptiles, they're a silicon based tube, we've made some modifications on these, they're normally a bit longer, we've cut them down shorter and I've actually put some white electrical tape down here because they're quite delicate and I find that they're teeth will sometimes puncture that and they're not the cheapest things in the world. Uh, we have a stylet down there so once we get this into position we'll actually take that metal stylet out just to stiffen it up makes it easy to get that in. So we're going to go ahead and position this into her windpipe and hook her up to the anaesthetic machine. So it's a bit hard to capture on video exactly what I'm looking at because this tongue gets in the way and sometimes we've got to use a tongue depressor just to push the tongue down and out of the way, just push up underneath it. Come on. So I'm visualising the windpipe. There we go. Pass the tube down. Try and get a good way down so that's nice in position. Take the stylet out, and that's how you put an ET tube into a lizard. So we've got an ethotizer and we've got it hooked up to the anaesthetic machine now. As you've probably seen in the other videos, we use a tongue depressor to secure that in. So she's on her back in position ready for the surgery. And always clicking in the background is that ventilator, so I know Carla's just sorting out the anaesthesia. So we're going to go ahead and prep her for the surgery. And we'll make an incision in that belly and take the ovaries and her uterus or cell pinks out. Alright, so we've got her anaesthetised now and she's under the clear drape and we'll prep her up for surgery. It's got this funny little patch of skin here, it's not an old scar, I think it's just a bit of retained skin so we're going to make an incision in this area. But we're not going to go down the midline here, unlike dogs and cats, these guys have a large mid-abdominal vein and we want to avoid that where we can. So we're going to come off to the side by about a centimetre, make a small incision, it's probably going to end up about sort of three centimetres long to give us good visualisation, we should be able to get both ovaries through that incision. So, Lift up the skin here and we'll make a little incision. Alright, so we've made the incision in her abdomen and directly under where I'm looking I can see a bit of fat pad, which is this golden brown sort of stuff. These guys have two fat pads on either side of the abdominal cavity, the stylomic cavity, and there's a bit of liver here that's this brighter orange tan colour. And I can see intestine and a few other bits and pieces down there. So yeah, we're going to identify and pull up an ovary. 
So we just move things aside gently. And so this is the right oviduct. This is where the eggs would be normally. And as I just gently pull up on that, I can see the ovary starting to come up towards me. It's very delicate tissue, so you just got to handle it gently. You don't want to damage it. So you can see here the ovary is just sitting up with a bunch of grapes. Normal, healthy looking ovarian follicles. There's no big follicles in this lizard, so she hasn't bred this year or is not reproductively active too much at the moment. So. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is tie off this uterine tissue or selfix tissue and we'll get that out of the way. Sometimes this can be left behind but I like to take it out because it's one less thing that can prolapse. So we'll get that out of the way and then we'll concentrate on getting the ovary up and out. And to do that we simply clamp across the whole lot. Some little fine blood vessels in there, so we're going to tie those off. Just put another clamp above that. So again, for the vets and the nurses watching this, I'm using suture material called PDS. And it's a size 40, so it's quite thin sort of stuff. It's a dissolvable type of suture. There we go, underneath that bottom clamp, put a tie around that. Pull the clamp out. And tie down onto the crush that we made with that clamp. And so this is all coming out. So we slice that off. Take that out. So, so that's a uterus there on the right side. And we can undo this clamp and hang on to the tissue just to make sure there's no blood vessels that we missed or anything like that. That looks pretty good. We can let that go into a back into a body. Alright, so this is her right ovary. And what we're going to do is clamp across the bottom of that. And we've got to be a little careful, you can't see it on the video, but there's a little gland, the adrenal gland sitting down below that, plus a large blood vessel that I can see on my side. Well, obviously make sure we don't damage those. So this is probably the fiddliest part of the surgery. And we also don't want to leave any ovarian tissue behind. So i going to use two little curved hemostat forceps, little mosquito forceps to get underneath this tissue. And clamp that down there. So that's all clamped off. So we're getting underneath the clamps, underneath the ovarian tissue. Make sure we've got it seated nicely underneath, underneath the tissue. Cut our suture material off. And so that ovary should be ligated across the bottom there now. So then we just gently remove and tissue at the top. And there is our ovary that's removed. You can see all the little ovarian follicles there. So she had plenty of follicles on that one particular ovary. So to close up her abdomen, I'm just going to get the peritoneal tissue, which is the lining of the inside of the body cavity. And these guys, it's actually a black colour. You can see there that pigmented, pigmented tissue there. So to protect their internal organs from ultraviolet light. So then we just grab some of that with our needle. We'll start at one end of the incision, try not to 
fix that. And lots of different ways of closing abdomens. I'm going to do what's called a simple continuous pattern in this. So I'll do one knot at the one end and stitch along and do another knot at the other end. Alright, so tie that off. So that's all the muscle subcutaneous tissue closed over it. And we're going to put a couple of stitches in the skin. There's a bit of debate about what suture pattern is best in the skin of reptiles. Personally, I don't think it makes a lot of difference as long as you close it and it heals well. So, and I've changed the way I do things a little bit with these guys. I just do what's now called a simple interrupted. So, it's all these other patterns of mattress sutures and those sort of things, but they all seem to heal pretty well no matter what pattern you do. So, with a simple interrupted, we just take single stitches. And that's how you desex a dragon. So we're going to let her wake up now. As I said, give her some pain relief and some fluids just to help maintain her blood pressure. I don't expect her to make a full recovery. So here's Icy. She's woken up from anaesthetic. She's got her endotracheal tube out. Obviously, still a little bit. Worse for wear, got her eyes shut and her tongue hanging out. Not the most attractive picture in the world, but we'll let her wake up a bit, uh, bit more from the anaesthesia and she'll go home this afternoon.